ones, dear ones, we are Judah. We are Judah of the angelic Judah nation. And you also are Judah of the Judah family of the Judah nation. So let's all join together as a family of both angels and human souls. We are not as different as you might think. We might just be a few steps ahead of you. That is all. That is all. We are your big brothers and sisters. We are here showing you the way, just like a big brother or sister teaches the young one how to tie their shoe or brush their teeth or wait for the school bus in the mornings and so on. This is, we are here in support of you. We are here, we are here just to love you and be in relationship with you. You see, that is our primary purpose. Our primary purpose is to love you and be in relationship with you. Why do we do that? Why is that our purpose? Because we love our creator. We are in perfect union with our creator, with the wishes of our creator. And the creator loves you and wants to be in relationship with you. Not very complicated, is it? So we want to begin answering this question for you tonight. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We hear and see you asking that. So we want to talk about it from two different angles, which is very common, which we do frequently on this, 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 this channel. You see, there is, um, there are egoic parts. They're not you, they're conditioned ways of thinking and being that would drive you to want to find a purpose, a higher purpose than what you are embodying. And so when the ego is asking this question, we would answer it differently than when your soul is asking the question. So lift, listen carefully here for a bit. So when this question arises in your heart, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What in the world am I doing? How do I live? You must discern. Is it the ego asking this question or is it your soul? Now, when the ego asks this question, it's because you've already done this, that, or the other, and somehow your desires still are not satisfied. And so the culture and uh, cultural conditioning, advertising, media, uh, religious standards, educational standards, parental expectations, all of these will cause you to think that you must add on something else to be what you are to fulfill your purpose, whatever this divine purpose elusive thing might be, it seems. And so all of this conditioning of the ego will drive you to think you need something more added to the mix in order to fulfill your destiny, or you need to give up something. You need to eat less. You need to do this, that, or the other, meditate more and so on. And so the ego will always tell you, you must be more of this and less of that because you see, listen carefully for the lie. This is how you identify the ego. It is based on this lie that you are not enough. You're not enough. You see, it tells you. So you must be something more. You must have a higher purpose than just this, than just this. Is this all that is? You see, the ego is a malcontent. Recognize that, my dears. The ego is a malcontent. It's always telling you, you haven't done enough, been enough, and so on. And so this discontentment is a sign that it is a foot. And so the way of goals and goal setting, this is, 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 is a popular topic in personal development, is it not? and in growth. And we're not saying there's anything wrong with having a goal. The thing is, is it goal of the ego or of the soul, which we're going to differentiate tonight. But you see, if you're in an ego state, you will set a goal and you may achieve it. And if you achieve it, it will fall flat. There will be a ring of emptiness to it. This vessel remembers in her Nashville days, as she pursued her music career, she was invited to the Grammys and 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 put on her special dress and her fancy shoes and earrings and she looked like a star and walked down the red carpet participated in the event but once she was there what she saw was is simply a lot of empty people a lot of empty people trying to impress one another 
And she also was there to try to impress someone in the hopes that they would finally give her that big break she was looking for, you see. And so when she went back to her hotel that night and laid her head down on the pillow, there was a feeling of emptiness, you see. So if you are pursuing a purpose or a goal, it may you may feel like what you really want. It may feel like the next right thing for you. However, if you achieve it and feel a hollow ring of emptiness, then you will realize that perhaps it was more aligned with your ego than it was with source and your high purpose, you see. And so this is one of the ways you distinguish is this an ego-driven goal or purpose for my life or soul-driven? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Now, an ego-driven purpose for your life will leave you feeling empty and still not enough because the lie remains. The lie is in the subconscious. The lie is the, the seed, a seed planted in you long ago long ago, perhaps in the womb, perhaps when you were a young child, perhaps in many lifetimes, this seed was planted. Careful, careful, careful parents, 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 listen up. You have the most important job on the planet. Just a look of your face can communicate disdain or you're not enough to a child when you're disappointed because they're simply doing what children do you see. Now, we're not saying that to make you feel guilty or shame, parents, to, but to keep you awake and aware, awake and aware, for you are raising up the salvation of this planet in truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what about the purpose of your soul, your true purpose, your high calling? It is to be what you are, which is perfect and blameless and good and right and true. And you say, but Judah, you wouldn't say that if you knew what I said yesterday to my spouse or if you knew that I stole something last week because I'm really nervous and scared about the holiday and not being able to show up with gifts. And whatever it is that you think you've done that has disqualified you from your purpose, even some of you listening tonight, you might be in a prison house somewhere. And you think, well, certainly I've been disqualified. And we would say, no, absolutely not. No matter what you've done in this life or in past lives, there is still a part of you that is innocent and pure and sweet. We can assure you of that because when you were born and you lay in your mother's arms, everything about you was purity and innocence and goodness. And you were able to relax and lay soft and supple and at peace in your mother's arms. This is your essence, your essence. Now, life will try to talk you out of it, but we assure you it's still there. The job is only to remember it. So what is your purpose? Your purpose is to remember, to remember what you are, to remember that you're a piece of God. And then to express that particular uh, reflection of God in what you're doing in the thing in front of you. And so if, if you are picking up the garbage for your neighbors in your community every day and you're doing it in loving service unto them, and in loving service unto God, and with complete love and acceptance of yourself, then we assure you, you are in a better state and you have a better goal and purpose for your life than the richest man on the planet who is operating out of manipulation, control, and greed, who has no love in his heart, you see, you see. And this is the lesson that we learn from this very sweet story we enjoy at the holidays of the Grinch. You see, it's not, it doesn't matter what you've experienced in the past or how life has distorted your thoughts and feelings and, and your way of being. If there's some love in you, if you can find a drop of love in you and begin to give it, then you are living in a high purpose, my friend, a very high purpose. Mm -hmm. And so 
We don't see things in ranks, you see. Whatever dimension in which you dwell, whether it be a dimension of sadness, and lack and limitation, or, or dimensions of peace and joy, we see in each of you this divine spark which is on its path of evolving back into all that is. And all that is smiles upon you, smiles upon you. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so we would encourage you not to take your life too seriously. Mm-hmm. For you might uncover this grand purpose, this particular thing that you are meant to do, and then five or ten years later find it's not at all what you thought, and you might embark on a whole different expression of your divinity. This vessel has been many, many things in her lifetime. She has been been in the pizza house cleaning urinals at three in the morning. She has cleaned people's homes, babysat their children. She has been a school teacher. She has uh, been a salesperson. She has been a music teacher. And now, look, in her 50s, she is a channeler. What about that? So you, you may think you've got it all figured out and then find out one day when you've achieved this grand goal and purpose that you think is exactly the right fit for you, that perhaps it doesn't ring as true as you thought and now you're off on to something else. So we would say don't take life too seriously. You can't mess it up. You can't miss it. There is no missing it. Really, in truth, there is no missing it. The only way that you can be in error, my dears, is not to love and forgive yourself. To not love and forgive yourself. Fear is the only error to block out love. So love and accept yourself and others. And in that, you are living your purpose. Jesus said, look at the flowers. They know how to do it. This is our paraphrase, and it's quite accurate. You see, a flower doesn't sit about fretting about how it should be something more than what it is or how it can meet expectations of the self and other. No, it simply just is there in beauty and innocence and purity. And it opens when it opens and closes when it closes and dies when it dies. And it doesn't fret about what it accomplished. And what purpose does it serve? It serves no purpose whatsoever except just to be what it is and to be beautiful, perhaps to be beautiful for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now the vessel will have some more things to say about this. And we support her in her, her, in her, her expression. Just as we support you in your expression of divinity. In, 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 in the ancient scriptures, it is said that each of the billions of souls in the universe, the billions of living beings are pearls strung upon the string, which is all that is, which is God. And so you, my dear, are, are a pearl strung alongside this one and alongside all the others here listening and everyone that you encounter. And all that is, is holding you all together in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pearl necklace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good.